Hi everyone, I'm Hao Yang Wang. I'm here to present our crypto paper, the malicious framework embedding backdoors into Twigbot block ciphers. This is a joint work with Thomas Perrin. When people hear about a backdoor of an encryption system, most of the time it refers to those weakness intentionally created in the implementation level, such as protocols of key management and key escrow. Another type of a backdoor is a cryptographic backdoor. It is embedded during the design phase of a cryptographic algorithm. However, there are very few known examples of such backdoor algorithm used in reality. Here are two examples. The first one is a dual EC. It is a pseudo-random number generator designed by NSA. It has been verified by Snowden and many other researchers that it has a backdoor inside. The second example is the two algorithm Kuznicic and Stripok, which are selected as Russian standard. Their S-Box was proved to have a special structure which was not claimed by the designer, so it might be a backdoor but has not been verified yet. In academic research, there are also limited number of works focusing on this topic, and unfortunately, Almost all designs were either broken or cannot provide solid security proof. In this work, we try to make some progress in this research field. Firstly, we propose a malicious framework to embed backdoors into Twigball block ciphers. Then, we show that our backdoors is efficient, which means that if you know the backdoor, you can easily recover the secret key used in any communica communications. We also provide a concrete security bond for our backdoor so that it is difficult for any adversary to recover the backdoor. Lastly, we provide a cipher example called LUMCM based on this framework and give security proof of this cipher. Now I will explain the malicious framework. This framework uses three essential components. The first one is tweak for block ciphers. Compared to a block cipher, a tweakable block cipher has an additional input tweak in order to select the permutation computed by the cipher even if the key is fixed. For the usage of tweak, there is no need to keep the tweak secret so that an attacker could know the exact value of the tweak used in an encryption. Even more, the attacker could have full control of the tweak such that he can choose whatever value he wants of the tweak. This attack scenario is also called chosen tweak scenario. The second component is partial nonlinear layers in block ciphers. When designing a block cipher, one of the most popular methods is a substitution permutation network. Each SPN run will consist of a linear layer and a nonlinear layer operating on the internal state. Partial nonlinear layer is a special case of uh, SPN where the nonlinear layer is only applied to a subpart of the, of the internal state. So for S-box based block cipher, a part of the state will bypass the S-boxes in each round and only goes through the linear layers as shown in this uh, picture. For typical ciphers, Zorro is the first block cipher adopts this structure, but it has been broken shortly after its publication. But this doesn't mean this structure is not secure. Later, a family of a block cipher low MC is proposed where the nonlinear layer size can be set arbitrarily, and this cipher remains secure so far. The last one is the extendable output functions. An XOF is a generalization of a hash function which maps an arbitrary length input to an arbitrary length output. An XOF can also be used as a classical hash function by setting the output length fixed. A good XOF has to satisfy the security notions such as collision resistance, pre-major resistance, and second pre-major resistance. There are not too many XOF algorithms. The typical ones are SHIG-128 and SHIG-256. They are defined in the SHA-3 standard, and later we'll use them to build concrete instances. This is a malicious framework. It is used to build a key-ordinating tweakable block ciphers. 
In each run, a sub key and a sub tweak will be added to the internal state. The key schedule is not specified and can be any appropriate algorithm. The framework has two special features. The first one is that the run function is composed of a linear layer and a partial nonlinear layer. Secondly, the tweak schedule is selected SOF. The concatenation of all the sub tweaks is the output of the XOF. One can instantiate the framework with any components he wants, but in order to embed backdoors, some specific steps has to be followed. Till now, you may still wonder what kind of a backdoor can be embedded inside this framework. The answer is related tweak differential characteristic with probability 1. With the knowledge of this in an attack, one could recover the secret key in one second. This picture illustrates the basic pattern of the one run characteristic. The block represents the difference of the internal state. The hashed blocks are non zero difference, while the white blocks are zero difference. As we can see, the sub tweak difference delta t minus 1 introduced by the tweak addition operation cancels the difference of a part of the internal state so that the part going through the subsequent nonlinear layer will be zero difference. Based on this principle, we can extend such characteristic to enough number of rounds for an attack. However, this differential characteristic cannot be used by any external entity because it can only be triggered by a certain tweak pair. We call it the malicious tweak pair. And uh, it also should be kept secret by the decipher designer. Accordingly, the tag using the backdoor is under the chosen tweak scenario. Now I will explain how to build the backdoor. Firstly, we should choose a pair of tweaks and keep it secret. And this is a malicious tweak pair. Next, for both of the tweak, compute its sub tweaks by the choosing XOF and then simply XOR them to obtain the sub tweak differences. The next step is to generate the differential characteristic and the linear layers. Firstly, select the plain tag difference delta p as the input difference of the differential characteristic to be generated, but with the requirement that the difference of this nonlinear part should be equal to the difference of the nonlinear part of the first subtweak difference. This is illustrated in the picture in the left side. Then we just need to generate the differential characteristic run by run by selecting an appropriate linear layer of each run. With the requirement that after the linear layer, the difference of the nonlinear part of the state can be neutralized by the next subtweak difference, as shown in the picture in the right side. The remaining components of the cipher, such as the Xbox and the, the K addition, don't affect the differential characteristic, and the specification of these components should be determined to ensure the overall cyber security. We also know that it is possible to embed multiple such differential characteristics by just selecting other plain text differences and adding extra constraint to the linear layers. Now I will explain the backdoor security of the malicious framework. Firstly, let me introduce a security notion, target difference resistance. Its definition is as follows. A hash function H is target different resistant if it is hard to find two input X and Y such that HX, X or HY equal to delta, where delta is a non-zero constant. So this notion is similar to the classical collision resistance of a hash function, where delta equal to zero. And the complexity is also the same as that of the collision resistance, that is a birthday bond 2 to the power of n over 2, n is the length of the hash value. The target different resistance naturally applies to XOF, as XOF is also a kind of a hash function. In terms of a shake 128, its security strength against the attack is a minimal value of n over 2 and 128, and the security strength can be doubled for SHIG-256. Now I will show that the backdoor is protected by the XOF. Assume that even if the embedded differential characteristic is publicly known, that is a plain text difference, the internal state differences and the sub differences are known. 
finding the malicious tweak pair is still difficult. Actually, this task is equivalent to solving the target difference problem of the XOF, as shown in this equation. Given the string of the subtweak differences, the target of the attacker is to solve the equation to find the malicious tweak pair. And if the length of the subtweak string is long enough, the complexity can be 2 to the power 128 for shake 128 and 2 to the power 256 for shake 256. Actually, there might exist other backdoors in the framework. Since we did not fix the tweak length, as long as the attacker can find a tweak pair whose output difference is the subtweak differences, he will discover a backdoor, even if this is not embedded intentionally. Moreover, it is also possible that there is a suitable tweak pair for a randomly given differential characteristic, that is, the subtweak differences can be any given value. All of these tweak pairs will imply new backdoors which are not intentionally embedded. However, finding these backdoors is still as hard as finding the originally embedded backdoor. In the next, I will explain a concrete instantiation of the malicious framework, which is named LUMCM. LUMCM is a family of a trickball block ciphers derived from the block ciphers LUMC. Compared to LUMC, it has an additional tweak addition in each round and it also uses an optimized representation where the k, the tweak, and the constant are only added to the nonlinear part of the internal state. A single round of LUMC m is depicted in this picture. The size of the nonlinear layer s can be set arbitrarily by choosing the number of s boxes used in the round function. The linear layer is an invertible binary matrix operating on the full state, which is different in each round and can be chosen randomly. But in order to embed a backdoor inside LUMCM, the linear layer matrices has to be customized following the building steps of the malicious framework. Lastly, trick schedule used in LUMCM is shake 128 or shake 256 depending on the expected security of the backdoor. We proposed three security notions to capture the backdoor security in different aspects. Accordingly, we proved that LUMCM has the following security properties. Firstly, LUMCM is undetectable. As I explained, an instance of LUMCM can be generated without any backdoors by choosing the linear layers randomly. Or we can generate an instance with a backdoor by designing special linear layers. However, we show in our paper that the attacker cannot detect the distinction between these two kinds of uh, instance. Secondly, the backdoor in LUMCM is undiscoverable. It is computationally difficult for the attacker to recover the backdoor. This is due to the target different resistance of the XOF. Lastly, but unfortunately, our backdoor is traceable. Since the attack using the backdoor is a chosen tweak attack, and also a chosen plain text attack, because this is a differential attack, once the backdoor is used in an attack, it will reveal the selected tweak values and plain text values. The entities who know it can try all the combinations of them to recover the backdoor. Without considering the backdoor, the cipher is also secure in the classical black box model. We proved in our paper that the security of LUMCM can be reduced to the security of LUMC, and currently LUMC remains very secure. Since LUMCM has an additional tweak, we discuss the security in two aspects. The first one is attacks without using the tweak. Without considering the tweak, LUMCM is an equivalent representation of LUMC, and there's nothing different if no backdoor is embedded in LUMCM. Even if a LUMCM instance is backdoored, we showed that the customized linear layer matrices can be considered as independently and randomly chosen from the view of the attacker. Thus, the attacker cannot utilize the special linear layer matrices to attack the cipher. Secondly, its attack based on the tweak. 
since the twig schedule is an XOF, the attacker can't control its output. So the tweak can provide additional advantage for the attacker. For the future works, since we only use the framework to build block ciphers, can we build other backdoor cryptography algorithms such as hash functions and max? For the usage of the backdoors, we only apply it to plain differential attack. Is there any other cryptanalysis techniques that works more efficiently? Lastly, since our backdoor is traceable, so how to make it untraceable so that it can be used currently? That's all. Thank you for watching this presentation.